right, we're going to get ready to bring in um, a number of images into Edge Animate so we can animate them. Now I've laid up a file in Photoshop. It's a layered image. It has a number of layers in here and I've laid it out more or less how I want it to look in Edge Animate. Now all these are going to be output as um, PNGs, but ideally certainly with Edge Animate, bringing them in as vector graphics would be ideal with a few maybe bitmaps because obviously you may have problems with bitmaps in it being responsive it may scale and you might have prob it, problems with the quality now i've laid all this out so what it will be doing is these animals will be appearing on the screen i'm going to have the cloud sort of slowly drifting over uh, in the background now i'll turn all the layers on that i want to come on they're all stacked up here um, I put on this little blue sky at the background mainly to just to help me lay it up. Now what happens in Edge Animate is that um, when it outputs it, it sort of turns it around a little bit and numbers it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rearrange my um, layers so everything is going to be back to front. Um, I don't need to worry uh, too much about... Um, the animals on here because you know it doesn't make any difference what the order is but I need to have my my clouds my small cloud and my large cloud and certainly the hills at the back but all the other animals I don't have to reorder because that doesn't necessarily matter because what happens is if once it comes into animate it will actually have everything in the reverse order so this will stop that happening so I've got it all ready I need to go to the file menu and I need to go down to scripts and I need to go to export layers to files. Make sure you have you don't check either one of the top ones or certainly the top one that has uh, layer comps to files because you get an error because these are not layer comps. It's l export layers to files you want. I click on that. Now I need to make sure I have visible layers only and the reason being I've switched off that background layer I don't need. I can turn the stage size to that color and that's better than exporting a, a sort of an image of color because um, that is not the best process of doing that. We want to have that specified in the code. Now my images, I want to create them PNG 24s. I want to make sure they have transparency and also I want to have trim uh, layers. And what that will do is just trim around where the content is rather than having all the blank space around it, which will make them more manageable. I need to browse and maybe create a folder where I'm going to save them. And all I need to do is click run and Photoshop will just run through all that. It runs a script, isolating all the images and saving them individually in the format we specified. Depending on how much you've got on here, um, it will take longer or shorter to do it. When it comes up, it will say export layers to file successfully. Photoshop has exported all my images separately as PNG files. It put the prefix that I asked, that was the name of the file, which was animals, and it's put all these. So um, layer zero will be um, at the back, and then it will work in that order. So that's why we reversed them around. If we hadn't had that chain reverse the order of these three images, the um, clouds and the hills, it would have put them at the top of the stack when we import them. All the other animals don't really matter. So if you want something definitely at the back, um, make sure you reorder the layers and it will number them appro appropriately. Okay, or oh, well, you can do that manually later on. Okay, once we're ready, we've opened up um, Edge Animate, we'll click on Create. Now the first thing we need to do is give it a name and I'll just call it Animal farm to give that a name um, once I give it a name I will need to make the stage bigger that's going to match the stage or the canvas we set up in Photoshop so if I take this up it's going to be 1024 oops there we go we'll go up there by 768 so we'll take that up there 768 Then I'll make my canvas a sort of a sky blue color. Uh, and once I've done that, I'm ready to um, bring in my 
images. So I need to go over to the libraries here and click on the little plus for the images. I need to navigate to my folder and I'll shift click them all and I'll say open. Now I'll bring them all in there um, so they're all ready to use. Now because we we can drag them all to the stage in one go and then animate them, switch them on and off in the timeline rather than bring them in individually. Now as they process and bring in, each of these will give you a little preview when we toddle the um, little arrows at the side so it lets you know what the images are. I'm gonna make sure, yep, that I select them all, sort of shift click the lot, and then I'll drag them on the stage and drop them there. Now once it's got that, they're still all selected, I will just move them around. All the animals on one side, so up in the elements, I'll sort of shift click those and move them over to one side here. And also we've got the, um, it stacked these up as well. So I need to select my um, two clouds and pull those up, shift away from them and move them into a better location. Now it might be the case that you again might need to rearrange some of these items and probably the best way would be to go through them all, probably turn them off up here and rearrange them to make sure they're all in the position you would like them to be before we start animating them. I'll switch each of those on and off and make sure I have them in the positions that I want. They're a little bit out of proportion, but it'll give you an idea of how um, you can switch things on and off and animate different items. So I'll come along here. And always important that you do this before you start animating because uh, Adobe Edge Animate records quite a lot of stuff. So if you start moving things around, thinking you move them to another location, it will probably start animating them into another location once you start having keyframes. Now I've got all those on, they're all in a stack here. Now I've turned them on and off to move them around, but also you can turn them on and off down here. Ideally, this is the best place to sort of move things around up here in the elements uh, panel, which works the same as Photoshop's um, layers panel. Now all those um, images have been set up and they're all ready to go and animate. So what I want to do is probably turn them all off so if I um, select them all, either select them down here or up in the elements, I just need to select all the animals and leave the clouds and the background. I don't need to worry about those. So shift click them all, select them all on the stage. Now I need to look it up here, up at the top, this is the auto transition. It will do an auto transition. So sometimes you just want something to just appear. You don't want it to dissolve or fade up or fade down. Um, you need to turn that off. Now the auto keyframe can be quite useful because you um, don't may not want to keep on manually putting it in, but sometimes you do want to manually put it in. So we look at both ways of doing that. Now, first of all, um, I will turn that on. It goes red, so that's the auto keyframing. And up at the top, I take um, I can take all my objects down and make them um, invisible. Now this is just one way of doing it. So first I'll get my LAM. Um, I click on the LAM um, layer in the um, timeline. And if I drag that out to say just 0.1 second there, and what I would do here still with this on um, auto keyframing, I would go back up and take that back up to 100%. Then say for example, if I move that to two, and then took this back um, down to, zero. Now if I move the playback head scrubber and go through it, it does that and disappears. So it's not dissolving. All right. Now the other way around, if because we didn't have the transition on, I will show you what would happen if we have the transition on. Auto transition on there. I move the playback head to 0 0.01. I still got the uh, auto keyframe. I would take it up and you'll see it gives some properties for a transition and then take that down to zero. Now if I move the playback head back to the beginning and I play it, it would dissolve and disappear. So that's what those two things do. If you don't have the transition on, it will just pop up and appear. Now I'll turn that off and I'm gonna delete 
my uh, transition on that. Now no another way you can um, do this is by putting in a keyframe and turning things on and off. Now I'll just delete all these keyframes here. Okay, so I've selected all those keyframes and deleted them. Now an important thing I need to do is I'll just make sure I shift click and I've got them all selected, all the animals on them, I won't see anything. I need to take up the opacity to begin with, all right? I don't wanna do that later or I'll add a keyframe for it. Now the next thing I need to do with it all selected, I just make sure the play hat back head is on zero and just click by it and I go down to add keyframe and what I'm looking for is display. So I click on display and it will add a display for all of those. Now this is really useful because it just turns things on and off and I simply come along here and turn off the ones I don't want. So I'll just click on those. All but the lamb I will turn off. So the lamb's on. Now I make sure I don't have auto transition on there and I can have um, auto keyframing which will be useful. I move it to the one second here and then when I get there I now turn off the lamb and I turn on the chicken. All right. So I move along to here to and this time I turn off the chicken and I turn the goose on. Then I move along to three. I then um, turn off the goose and I turn the pig on. Then I will move along here. I will uh, turn off the pig, turn on the donkey and then move on to the next one. Um, uh, donkey off and rabbit on go along a little bit further and again I'm going to turn off the rabbit and turn on the cat then move on again I'm going to turn off the cat on the horse and then uh, finally I move to the eight and I'm going to turn um, off the horse and turn on the cow. Now if I go back here and I play that, it will just switch through all those different animals on and off. That's just a display. So sometimes if you have an item in the timeline that you want to turn off, you add a display um, function on it, a keyframe, and you can turn that on and off, and that's how you have things appear in the timeline. Now there's no sort of bars on here because there isn't a transition. All it's saying in the code is, it's on, it's visible, or um, it's hidden. And that's a good, simple way of doing that. Now, the next thing we'll do is we're going to add um, some movement on the cloud. So we want the cloud sort of drifting across and the whole of, of, of that. So how we can do that is if I drag the playback head back here. Um, now, what I can do is I can just get both of those clouds. So um, I'll probably start off and get them in a, you know, a little bit of a better location. I'll have them back here, and I'll have this one down here. All right. So I shift click both of them and I've got them in the timeline. I'll come up here and just put a pin on it by double clicking, and then I'm just going to drag the playback head across here to there. And then all I'm going to do is sort of move them across here like that, get a little bit of movement across there. And I've got that. So that that will have a nice bit of movement going across in the background. Now I'll play it in the browser. Here it goes. And it's switching between all those animals. And finally, we've looked at this before. If I just close that down, is putting a action on there. So like an action in the timeline. If I move the just get rid of the pin by double clicking on it move it right to the end here and then I can put this action on there. I click on the action and I want playback and I get it to play and I want it to do it to the stage. Now if I just press the enter here it says symbol play and inside the brackets we need to put zero and that's the location it goes back to to replay it again. Now if I play it again it will go through all those different items 
and will loop all the way back because it gets the end and it has an action that says go back and play the stage one more time. Now if I come back and I just get rid of this and close that down, we'll look at something else where we'll go back and sort of click on the, um, go back and bring up the stage. So I click on the stage either here or in the elements to bring up the stage div. And what I will do is put on responsive scaling. So I will go um, options for both and we'll see what happens. So we'll preview it in the browser. Now what it's done, it's dragged it out so obviously proportionally on those things and now it's responsive as it pulls it in and out and you always have to be very careful because these were bitmap images so when we do drag them out and they go bigger or smaller they will lose um, quality so that's why it's better with vector shapes or SVGs